hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial about flow motion. Because today I'm going to show you how to create this really cool 3D movie poster look. So, just follow me into After Effects. <laughs> yeah! You have made it! So, before I even say anything, I want to let you know that you have made a good decision. You want to learn how to create the intro you just saw, and you will. And this is super easy. But once you watch this, you will also think, hmm, I learned so much more. And this is because I will also show you how to set this up in a real 3D scene. But wait, there is more. You will learn how to integrate extra footage, for example, from big films and action VFX. Link in the video description. And I will also give you a super cool trick for screen inserts in general. And I will bust some myths here. Something you may have done wrong all the time. Why is it actually called a 2.5D animation? Well, this is because the objects we are using are only 2D objects. Hmm, okay, but why don't we just call it 2D animation then? Well, this is because we are placing them in 3D space. Okay, there you have it. This is how to set this up. Thanks for watching. There is actually more to this. So let's maybe concentrate on just one hero here. So what about Scarlett Johansson? Because she's one of the more advanced figures I animated. Because have you noticed that in the video she is covering her and his face with her sword. And also the sword is reaching into the distance, which by the way looks super cool when you add depth of field to this. So let's start by cutting her out. And we could use the roto brush tool for this, but I go the extra mile and use a mask. And I do that simply because when working with the roto brush tool, especially on such a large image, this could slow down things a bit. Okay, but feel free to use it or maybe even use it and then render it out as a PNG with transparency. Okay, perfect. Done. And now we can start to see the issue. Hmm. Because Spidey is sitting in front of her. But we have our secret weapon, the clone stamp tool. And this works the same way as in Photoshop. So double click to get in layer mode. Now. Hold down ALT while clicking on a specific part of the image and now your stamp samples the region and you can paint over parts you want to recover. And each of your strokes is stored within the effect. Separately. Great. So this just takes some time. But the next step is a tricky one. You have to tell your brain to think in three dimensions. And I would therefore separate her in her head her body, front arm, back arm, and the two different swords. Oh, oopsie. Hmm. We run into the next issue. Once we have the sword cut out, we are missing some parts of her hair. Hmm. Well, but by now we know how to fix this. Okay. And once we have the different parts, let's go through all of them and set the anchor points to where her joints would be as this will be super helpful later on. And you can do that by hitting Y to move the anchor point. And now we can finally jump into the third dimension by enabling 3D for all of our layers. And we can also create a camera to actually see what we are doing. Hey, and also enable a second view over here to get a better sense of how we move and position things. But for example, for the swords, it makes sense to rotate them so they do not only lay on one specific depth position, but they have depth. Oh, but now they seem stretched and squeezed. Hmm. No worries. The best thing to compensate for stretching and squeezing is squeezing and stretching. So simply grab the layer handles and do exactly that. So they look perfect from the camera's point of view. And you can simply take a copy of the original poster and place it beneath everything as a reference. Hey, you can also set that as a guide layer. In that way they are shown in this composition but nowhere else. 
they won't even appear in your render. So right click and choose guide layer. And now <sighs> the bad news. We have to do that for all of our assets. Hey. But of course you could also use elements that are already pre-keyed. And I will add a list where you can find them in the video description. And this is also what I have done for some of my additional elements. For example, the fire elements that I got from ActionVFX. They really have a lot to offer on their homepage and are the go-to spot for professional work these days. Hey, I also took some elements from big films and those links are also in the description. For example, the portal or those Doctor Strange mandala things. Hmm. Already animated and pre-keyed. Hey, voila! And by the way, if you want to purchase any of those, feel free to use my link in the description because in that way you also support Flowmotion. Well, me. Okay, once done, we can animate our camera. Simply set keyframes for position, orientation and so on, on the first frame. Then go forward a few seconds and with the camera tools you can now animate all of this. Hey, and you have all your tools on the C button. Simply hit it once, twice or three times for orbit, pan and dolly. Or use the one, two or three button which will do the exact same. Hey, and remember when I said the depth of field will make all of this look way cooler? Well, simply enable it in the camera setting and let's focus on Scarlett Johansson. And I will do it the same way you may do it now. Bring it up and down and try to get it as sharp as possible. Maybe a little more or maybe too much, but almost almost too much. Hmm. Hey, there's a way more easy way. Simply select the head of Scarlet and also the camera. And now go to layer, camera and choose link focus distance to layer. And now no matter what you do, she will always be in focus. Okay, step one is done. But we want to integrate all of this into a real scene. So how do we do that? Well, we simply we create a camera track to get the camera movement from this shot and we use that for our poster scene. Hmm. Sounds complicated, but once you understood it, it is super duper easy. And the benefit of this is that we can do really a lot with the track later on. So stick with me. Here is the footage with me holding the frame and I right click on it and choose track and stabilize and then track camera. Hey, in here let's directly jump to the advanced settings and enable detailed analysis because, well, it's just more accurate. Once it has finished, you see all tracking points that After Effects has detected. So I look out for four points that represent my frame, meaning four points that lay on the same layer. And I can select all of them and right click, generate solid and camera. Now it has created a solid that sits exactly on our frame as well as our tracked camera. And we can simply stretch and squeeze this solid so it has the frame dimensions. Okay, we are almost done. Let's import the animated poster comp. And at the moment this is just flat. Hmm. No 3D info in here. Well, because all information is within the pre-comp. But we can click on collapse transformation. So After Effects will take a look beneath the surface of our comp hey, and will realize that this is indeed 3D. So looking almost good. We can now position it and set its depth to whatever we think looks best for our shot. Hmm. But now we need to roto out the frame. <sighs> well, no. No! We have a solid, remember? that tracks with the frame and has the same dimensions. So for our animated poster, we simply use that as an alpha mat. And now we are just missing one step. Hey, also remember when I told you about a secret that you are doing wrong all the time? So I bet you have done screen inserts before. Hey, and I also bet that you have added tracking markers to your screen or even used a green screen to place something in there later. 
or even worse, you used a green screen with tracking markers? Hmm. And please let me know in the comments if you have done so. And I've been there too, so don't be shy, tell me. So, actually for screen replacement, you need no tracking markers and no green first. I have spent hours and hours of rotoing out tracking markers, actually way more time than I needed for the tracking and the insert. So simply use a dark background within your frame phone, TV or whatever it is that you want to insert. Because a dark color will show all your reflections later on. Hey, and reflections are what makes this realistic. Clients love reflections. Oh, and if you want to have interactive light, simply choose a dark color. And you can later on use a U effect to shift that color in each direction you want to have. And for the reflections, you can tint it and you again have a dark screen with the reflections to work with. Bum. Because by simply adding that on top with the blending mode set to add or screen, you will get the exact, well, 100% accurate reflections on top of your image. And again, you can use the original footage, use the solid as an alpha mat, and here you have only your reflections and add them and call it a day. <sighs> and before I'm going to call it a day, I will quickly announce the winner of the I Want It All bundle. Hey, um, Jonathan Capulino, you can be super happy now. All of this is yours. And for all you loser, for all you non-winners, there's a link to the bundles in the description as well. Hey, and for now, I wish you a lot of fun animating in two and a half deep.